everyone. It's Elaine Beck, and we here we are again at the studio uh, in Oro Valley, Arizona, with um, Proverbs Media Group and our good friend Mark Harris. Um, he's been here several times with us, and it's always exciting to have him. Uh, Mark was a pastor yep. for 25 years. That's correct. And um, he now has a wonderful organization here in Tucson called For Tucson, the letter four, mm -hmm. and then Tucson spelled out. And um, mm. it's just, you know, we, we try and get together every once in a while and just caught up, get caught up on what's happening in the world or, or what we're talking about, subjects that we know that are really important to you. And, and today we're going to do one about the wonderful season that we're in of Christmas. And the blessing that it is that every year we take the time, and this is the idea, is it not? I mean, I know it's commercialized and everything, Mark, but the idea is that we take the time to stop and remember that Christ's birthday reigns again. The mm -hmm. day that he was born and came into this world to save our souls. And too often with the commercialization and the other issues like this year with COVID and, and things happening with the government and that, that everything sort of is bombarding us, you know, and we're, we're having difficult times sometimes to take that time to stop. But we, I wanted to talk today a little bit with a man of God who has practiced that and spoke about it year after year to congregations even um, and talk about what it means to us right now and how we take the time and how we put that that mindset you know so Mark what do you have thanks to say for today? having me today it's You're a welcome. pleasure to see you Merry Christmas to you Merry Christmas to you and um, yeah there's a lot of uh, Competition for Christmas this year, isn't there? Oh, yeah. And um, each one of us are responsible for how we respond to those things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this year in particular, we're uh, being pressed not to have any kind of celebration, whether it's church or family gatherings or those mm -hmm. kind of things. And uh, everybody's going to have to make up their own mind about what they choose or choose not to do. But uh, apart from that, uh, Christmas is, uh, for me personally, it's one of the most fun times of the year because uh, when you're shopping, in, uh, even on the radio, there's, there's stations that just play all Christmas music. <laughs> so the whole world is celebrating uh, the birth of Christ. And yes. so uh, that's really, really uh, a remarkable time. No matter what politics is going on, no matter what uh, where we're at uh, economically, whether we're uh, in a recession or a boom time or whatever, uh, Christmas is one of those opportunities where we can stop and uh, actually uh, the world kind of celebrates together. Uh, over my lifetime, and I'm not a young guy anymore, but over my lifetime I've seen it progressively get where um, it's less about uh, Jesus and more about other other things from uh, shopping to uh, sports we, we don't have that this year so I mean there's a lot of things that uh, people traditionally would would look to so m maybe uh, that's a positive thing that give people a chance to reflect on what's really important in life what amen. really matters amen and um, does church really matter is it essential uh, does family does it matter and uh, those are good questions. Those are uh, Mark. things we're having to ponder this year that we typically can gloss over. Right, right. I, I, I get the feeling though, and and I love this because I think my peace is in knowing that, you know, God is always in control, and there's always a purpose and a reason behind what does happen, the good, the bad, and the ugly, as mm -hmm. they say. And so I like to think of it as, you know. Just like when the whole COVID thing started, um, many people said, 
you know, sometimes in some instances, there was many families that it was the first time they sat down and ate together in years, maybe, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Um, it was the first time that people were brought together, maybe not under good circumstances, but given the opportunity to get to know each other better again, to rebuild family yeah. feelings and, and to relate on a healthier way. Um, but then now it's been going on 10 months, the nine at least. Right that we've been dealing with this. So now we're dealing with, you know, Christmas, the positive Christmas, and yet at the same time, we're dealing with the negative depression and sorrows of families that have lost a business or um, lost their job or um, uh, dealing with illness. I mean, you know, it, isn't it amazing? Do you ever stop and think that when there's a tornado um, or there's a uh, an earthquake or there's a tsunami or anything like that happens, including, you know, COVID, the world doesn't stop. We don't quit being ill. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's people still dealing with sorrow in their lives. There's still death for other reasons. Right. There's still all of these other life issues that happen every day. I mean, the refrigerator can still get a leak and the, the, <laughs> the sink can still yeah, plug life up. Life goes on, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And so we're dealing with all that. But, you know, and I think that's the whole thing, though, is, you know, it all comes down to me anyway that we're all here for a purpose, and that purpose stems from our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely right. And so, so, so what do we do with that now and make, get over that hump and take that negative and set it aside and grasp hold of that positive? Yeah. You know, in some of those natural disasters that you're talking about, there's a finality to it. The tornado comes, does its thing, and it's gone, and uh, the rebuilding process takes place. With this COVID, um, there seems to be no finality to it. There seems to be no end. Um, when we started, it was to flatten the curve and, and so that we would be able to uh, manage hospital beds and all that. And um, it's progressed quite a bit in that 10 months that you're talking about that mm -hmm. it's uh, no longer about flattening a curve. And, uh, um, you know, now there's... Uh, what started off as voluntary uh, actions, people trying to do their best to, uh, we didn't know a lot about it when it first started, so everybody was cautious, uh, and rightfully so, but uh, we know a lot more now than we, than we did, and mm -hmm. it still seems that uh, uh, the goalposts keep moving, you know, yeah. the uh, whatever the standard for to bringing this to an end uh, keeps moving. And the Bible says that the hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so mm -hmm. when we keep hoping for an end uh, and it doesn't come, then that's when you start having all the other um, pathologies, I guess, w of uh, our behavior, whether it's uh, eating more, drinking more, <laughs> drugging, uh, whatever wow. you're doing to look for some kind of relief through this uh, process. And I think at Christmas, this is an opportunity to realize that those things uh, may on the short run make you feel better, but in the long run, they're really not solving the issue. And um, this is one of those opportunities where we can actually stop and ask the question, what is the root of some of those things in my life? Right. And um, when you're not able to work, or your business is um, suffering or uh, other family members are suffering, you realize that um, some of the harder questions in life uh, are, are right there in front of you. Yeah. And uh, you can choose to escape them, but the reality is that they're, they're still there. Yeah. And maybe this is the season that we uh, have an opportunity to come back to God and 
uh, really assess where we're at in our walk with him. And uh, I'm, I personally am very optimistic about uh, next year. And um, I have no idea what it's going to look like. It None of us do. But um, I'm optimistic about that. Um, and I am pretty confident that whatever comes, if we are walking with the Lord in the right way, that um, he never leaves us or forsakes us. He never abandons us. And um, I guess we get an opportunity to see if our faith is real. You know, we talk as church essential. Right. But is our, our faith real? Can it uh, endure these kinds of difficulties? Very and true. do we still stand at the end? And, uh, you know, these are the kind of things that make you better or make you bitter. And, yeah, um, that's, that's very true. You really true. have a choice. And um, if we're followers of Jesus, then we don't like it, uh, what circumstances that we're in, but they can make us better yeah. if we'll allow God to work in our life. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think I'm seeing that in a lot of people. I, uh, uh, As you know, I was in Washington, D.C. again mm -hmm. last week, and uh, I talked to many people, and I saw such a, I, there was such a positive feel. Mm -hmm. Um, you'd think that going there right now with what's happening with the election fraud and all that going on, that people would be downtrodden and, oh my goodness, what are we going to do and in a panic. And instead, what you hear and see, not just there, but everywhere in people that of believers anyway, mm -hmm. and that's, that's who I hang with. Yeah. But in all of them, I just keep hearing the, you know, well, God's going to get us through and he will. And, 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 and this feeling of, like you said, you know, even when we look at the possibilities of what could happen, any of them are, oh, they're things that are going to be overcome. And the end result has got to be better than where we are. Mm. And so um, I, I see people rejoicing, you know. Uh, excited about the holidays. I'm with you. I, <laughs> you know, while I was in Washington, um, my sister had gone with me, and I only see her um, a couple times a year normally. And so we met up there, and we went and did a little girl shopping. Of course, you know, you don't do those things. And of course, the stores were just like, oh, the beautiful decorations and the music, mm -hmm. and you find yourself going around, you know, humming to it, yeah. you know. It lifts your heart. And so I hope and pray that all of you um, that are, are listening to this can take that same thing and remember that, you know, it's, there is, there's such heart in knowing that, you know, we know the end of the story. As I call it, it's my real mm -hmm. happily ever after because I know that's what's going to be, it's going to be. You know, as a kid, the stories right. that you get read, and it said they lived happily ever after, and you know that's not true. But <laughs> you do know that someday you're going to go to heaven as a believer and that you will have happily ever after. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, I think it's, it's that feeling. And, um, you know, I do believe that the coming together of families is becoming more prevalent and predominant right now in the country than it had been in years. Mm -hmm. And people are, yes, there's the dissension that the political side is causing between families, but there's also a lot of love and a lot of coming together because of COVID in agreement and, and, and wanting to protect each other yeah. and to take care of our families more than we did and to spend more time with them because we know that that value is, yeah. is so great. And especially during a time like this at Christmas. And, you know, the government in, in areas is saying, you know, well, don't come together and don't do this and don't do that. I say do what God leads you to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, do what God puts on your heart. You know, be with who you feel needs you this year. And um, take the opportunity to love the people that are struggling through it. And whether it's a neighbor or um, someone from your church that you haven't seen in a long time or you barely ever see anymore or whatever, reach out to everybody that you can. And, 
you know, spread some of God's love and that rejoicing in, in the, the newness of another birthday for our Lord and Savior, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's good. So one of the, the other sides of the coin that happens at uh, Christmas is in all this proximity, uh, being together with family, is that um, um, it's, it's, I guess especially since it's a, a very divisive year, mm-hmm. um, my experience is I've seen lots of families that are uh, on both sides of this issue. Right. And uh, it can be pretty volatile putting everybody together to celebrate Christmas and that kind of thing. Right. And uh, I'm reminded that the Bible says as much as it depends upon you to be at peace uh, with all, all men. And so um, when we have in-laws and outlaws and we have all the family in right. and everybody shares different views, um, ideally we'd love to be able to love people and, and um, demonstrate that love to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's times you're um, going to be have your buttons pushed during the holiday if you really do have family that are going to get together. And um, so the challenge for us as followers of Jesus is uh, not to let that rob us of the joy of the, of the season. But, you know, uh, as volatile as this uh, political season has been, it's really difficult, and there seems to be, as I was sharing with you earlier, there's no gray. It seems like you're on one side or the other. Right, right. And uh, people are strongly on one side or the other. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but when you're in t- proximity, celebrating Christmas or whatever it might be, then uh, you really get to test the limits of your faith. And, and uh, can you love people that are not like you? Can you love people who um, see the world differently than you? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus reminded us that it's easy to love the people who love you. Amen. But it's not so easy to love the people who don't love you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes those are going to be people in your home or you're going to be in their home or somewhere t- uh, together. So um, there's a challenge there that uh, if we're not prepared in advance uh, spiritually and mentally and emotionally, it's real easy to get sucked into that um, negative vibe, and it can actually, um, instead of Christmas being a memory maker, it can be. A, it can really, it can be a memory maker, but it could actually be a devastating memory. Do you not think, though, that I, the way that I'm sort of viewing it is there's a time too that we're not to speak, and that we are to just respect other people's position. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I mean, my family is like everybody else's family. We have people that see things one way and people that see it the other way. Well, for in the first place, I think that we have a choice. Just because somebody's family doesn't mean that you need to spend that much time with them. And if, if they are volatile, if they are somebody who's not going to keep it quiet, they're not going to be able to stick with the subjects that don't hurt someone else or mm-hmm, offend, mm-hmm. you know, um, you have a choice. Yeah. You, you don't have to spend time with them. And maybe that's the wiser choice right now. Let the Lord play out where he is going to take right. us yeah. it's a before big you do that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the other thing is that, um, you know, maybe even if you're going to have a gathering, uh, maybe it's an opportunity to uh, be the lead in it and say, you know, we want everybody to come over. We're going to have dinner together and stuff. And um, we're going to set a few ground rules this year because we... (laughs) we, That might be really important to do. Yeah, exactly. Because we all know that in every family, there's that one or two people that they just can't stand it unless they're being outspoken, you know. So there's two ways, you know, there's... So every family has a nut in the family and a family <laughs> tree somewhere. And if you don't know who it is, it might be you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a true statement, isn't it? But, and, and I like the levity in it. And I think, but, but there is levity in it. And maybe that's part of it, too. Maybe this is an opportunity to, for us as Christians to be the bigger person and let them have their say and just keep your mouth shut, yeah. you know. 
just let them, you know, expel their feelings or whatever, however you want to put it. But, you know, that's not easy. But, you know, it's, it's all about um, making good choices, as in everything in life. And, and sometimes God tells us that, you know, the better thing to do is just put distance between people. And other times, maybe he's calling you to say something. Maybe there's somebody in your family that, you know, at a time when, when they are in need of some love, if you share some truth with them, maybe it'll help them to wake up to something else, yeah. you know? So it's something I, I think that in all things that we know that we're to pray and we're to, we're to take listen for God's answer and follow his lead. And so this year, it might be a time for you to do that and decide, you know, do we get together, don't we get together, and who do we get together with, and how do we handle certain people, and how do we show respect? Maybe there's an elderly person, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see this happening. Um, they, they were on one side or the other all their life. They don't know any different, and they, they haven't seen the changes, and... And, you know, maybe the best thing to do is let them come to dinner and just let them say what they want to say and just respect it and move on, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so there's so many ways to look at this, but well, we just have to It's definitely going to be a challenge, and so, yeah. you know, it's usually a challenge when families all get together anyway. <laughs> yes. Uh, but this particular year, it could be, uh, the tension could be heightened just because of the uh, political atmosphere or the... Uh, health concerns, um, there's all kinds of uh, additional stressors than just getting the family together. So right. even in the b best families, there's uh, opportunity to push each other's buttons and um, exactly. uh, say exactly. things, uh, behave in a particular way that um, you might not normally. And um, If they go to say something <coughs> offhanded that you don't like, just say, here, try this cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see you have five cookies in your mouth. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. Well, well, I think the biggest problem is people don't anticipate that. They come with some uh, uh, pretty high expectations of how it ought to be. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then when we're all together, it isn't quite like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that dashes hopes and... Um, it causes angst. It causes people to um, uh, say and do things sometimes that they are surprised at themselves that they wouldn't normally uh, have done. True, true. And so our, I think one of the things we could help people to do is predetermine, premeditate, pre-plan that right. some, something's going to hit the fan. And so how are you going to respond to that? It's not if it will, but it will. What do you do about that? And what's your response to be? Um, so I think, again, as much as it depends upon us to be at peace, we ought to try that. Yeah. And maybe Christmas dinner isn't the place to air out all the grievances uh, that you've had over the year or had from last year carried over <laughs> to this year or whatever, but really um, save that for another uh, gathering. I heard an interesting story uh, years ago that sort of plays into this where um, this woman had was all excited. It's like, I think it was like sometime like in September and she's like, oh man, I'm gonna have everybody over again this year. And I think it was for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but you can play this into Christmas as well. It's the same thing. Uh, and she was gonna have all these people over. And so she get, she's like, I'm just gonna get on the phone and call everybody so they don't you know, make other plans. And she's calling around and as she gets to each one of them, somehow in the conversation always ends up being, well, we'll come, but I hope that, you know, don't let Uncle Jim come again this year and start with his yelling and screaming at the kids and, and causing friction, you know, and then she'd call the next one. And that one was, you know, well, Jimmy and, and Sally, or uh, Joe's kids, always fight with, with Susie's. Can you keep them apart, you know? So everyone, as she realizes each mm. call, she realizes everybody's saying that they want to put restrictions on how the day will go. Mm -hmm. 
So she thought about it and prayed about it, and she sent everybody a letter that she had called and said, I just wanted to remind you that you are more than welcome to come to this year's Thanksgiving dinner at our home. But if you are expecting a perfect day <laughs> and perfect circumstances and for nobody to argue and for nothing to get burnt and for everybody to get along and not have any disagreements and the children to become little angels, then you're not welcome at our home this yeah. year. Yeah. So, and I think that's the reality and I think that's part of what we do is, uh, you're very right, is we, ha we set expectations that are unrealistic. Yeah. And so, you know, whether you're inviting them to your home or you're going to somebody else's home, go with an open mind and remember, God never promised us anything perfect, least of all a perfect day or a perfect holiday dinner. Right. That's right. So go and know that, you know, you're dealing with people that, you know, you supposedly love them. You know, try and love them through the issues because there's going to be issues, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think that that's a big deal is just, are you prepared for that? And mm -hmm. are your expectations sane? You know, are they, <laughs> are they reasonable, right? Yes. And um, Christmas can particularly lend itself to unreasonable expectations. Absolutely. We all have a pretty high bar. Um, what you want in that package, yeah. whether or not you like the color, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you like what was being served for the meal, um, was it hot enough? You know, I mean, there's just, it, it's crazy. We're so human, you know, uh, it's, everybody has a different, but I've learned that the older I get, the lower the bar goes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so or the higher the tolerance goes. Yes. You know, the bar may still be there, but <laughs> yeah, I, right. I just realize there's a gap. Yeah. This is true. This is you true. Know, between, That's probably uh, a better way of putting and, it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. But we, you know, wish everybody Merry Christmas. I wish you Merry Christmas and your yeah, family. Thank and, you, thank you. And, and you uh, as well and your family. And, yeah, we were, we were actually together, my daughter and I, last night going, okay, so what exactly, how are we laying this out? Because it's a little different for us this year. Last year, I was out of town. And um, so um, the fact that Bob had passed away just months before uh, took some of the edge off. So I wasn't even here. I was at my daughter's in Birmingham. So this is really my first Christmas at home uh, here in Tucson um, alone. And... Um, so uh, it's it's a tough experience, you know, and 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 that's I think so, sort of the point of this talk today is that, you know, everybody's dealing with something different this year. Yeah. Everybody is in some format, and with me, it's 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 you know, how do I fill my hours? I do that really well right now. Mm. Uh, I have this wonderful job that the Lord has given me, and it keeps me busy and. And I stay above the, the fray most of the time, as best as I can. But on the holidays and weekends, it's hard for people that are alone, yeah. you know. And the so. odd thing is this year, of all years, probably more people going to be alone. Absolutely. Uh, that, uh, than anything else, so. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, Could you close us in a prayer? Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, what a joy and a privilege this season brings where the world celebrates together your birth. And uh, we ask, God, that um, you would bless each of the families that uh, hear this and uh, uh, are going to invite family and friends to their home or be at somebody's home, that you would help them to uh, put you first and yes. uh, put their particular needs or grievances or uh, issues uh, second, and that this would be, in fact, the greatest Christmas uh, that they've any of us have experienced. Yes. And we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That This has <laughs> been a, a real pleasure and a joy as it always is. Um, you know, we're, we're so blessed to have so many great people in this area. And um, uh, each week we try and bring, you know, something enjoyable and yet you know, a little bit more wisdom and knowledge into people's lives by having mm. our live streams. Have Whether you invited me? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <that's laughs> and funny. so it's it's really neat. We thank you for coming, Mark. Yeah, and we thank really you. Appreciate My pleasure it. to be with you.
many a things. We, we, uh, we are really looking forward to Christmas, though, this year because it is a time that we can just stop where we are and just immerse ourselves in the love of the Lord and knowing that um, it was all done for us. Yeah, you know, absolutely and right. And that uh, someday we will all meet again in heaven in the, the, the next life, um, the continuation yep. of the story. Absolutely so right. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Thanks.